on YouTube. Tonight we're going to talk about double action. I've got the SP01 and the CZ75B. A lot of folks are switching over to double action guns and asking a lot of questions about them. So I'm just going to make a quick video to talk about kind of the finer points on how to grip a double single pistol and more importantly how to pull the trigger without disturbing the front sight. Uh, it is worth noting that when people say you don't want to see zero sight movement as you pull the trigger, they're not exaggerating. You can actually grip the gun and pull the trigger in double action with zero sight movement. Hopefully I can demonstrate that for you on camera. But in order to do so, there's a couple things you have to get squared away. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to properly grip it with your strong hand, how to build the grip with your weak hand, and then how to raise the gun to your eye to control recoil and then um, hopefully I can demonstrate some double action pulls. So let's get started. All right, so to start things off, you're gonna want to get as high as you can. This is called the back strap up under the uh, grip tang or beaver tail as some people call it. And you wanna get as high as you can underneath the trigger guard. And then you're gonna want to flag your thumb so that it rests on the manual safety. Um, you wanna put on a good squeeze front to back squeezing in from the front strap into the base of your palm and at the same time it's going to feel very stiff through your thumb right there if you're applying the right amount of grip pressure. So then as you get that grip squared away and that feels good you want to use it basically like you would swing a hammer. You're going to build the grip by coming up underneath up under the trigger guard. You're going to put your the heel of your palm as close to the back strap as you can get it and you're going to use that as an anchor point and you're going to use that to really squeeze the fingers on your strong hand back into the grip so this it's, it's doing the same front to back squeeze and i just rest this thumb on the slide pin i know that there's the glock grip and people do this like bob vogel you don't see guys shooting uh 1911 pattern pistols or anything based around a hammer fire design really like that just mainly due to the controls um, they just kind of get in the way so most if you look at photos of most people shooting guns, it's going to end up looking like that. That's a, it's a thumbs forward grip. Now, so the pressure you want to use in your support hand is going to be 100%. As hard as you can grip it, you're using the butt of the gun. You can kind of see my hand flexing in and pulling my fingers back towards the palm of my strong hand. And that's going to do a couple things. It's going to, number one, keep the pistol stable in my hand as I manipulate the trigger. And it's also going to provide leverage. And this is the, you get the most mechanical advantage at the bottom of this. If this is my fulcrum and I'm setting it as high up as I can, I get the most mechanical advantage putting a lot of pressure and the further down on the grip, the better. So that's what you're gonna end up doing. And there you go. So we're gonna take a step back and bring it up and show you how to sight it. All right, so I've got my strong grip. I'm gonna build my support grip and I'm gonna bring the gun up to my eye level. I'm not gonna drop down back like you see a lot of Glock shooters do, but I'm going to bring the gun up to my eye level to aim it. So I've got a lot of pressure coming from my support hand and a good bit of pressure like I swing a hammer from my strong hand and I'm going to manipulate the trigger. That was a good one. That's a good one too. That's a good one too. Almost zero movement there. So it's important to figure out how to lock the tendons in your wrist. So if you're doing it right, you feel some tension kind of right there. You're not going to really like it. It's kind of a weird sensation and I'm going to have a hard time describing it to you but you'll feel some tension right there in your wrist. And you're gonna to wanna to kinda, of, if you roll your shoulders out, it's gonna feel like you're kinda of trying to pull the gun apart almost. Really creating a good kind of vice grip right there. Those are all pretty much perfect. Um, but the more, important, more importantly, rolling your elbows out like that is going to make the gun recoil more flat. It's not gonna give you as much muzzle climb. So anybody can grip the gun and fire a single accurate shot, but the name of the game is both accuracy as well as controlling the recoil so you can fire again as quickly as possible. Um, I'll get behind the camera here and see if I can't show you what it's going to look like. All right, here we are. I've got the gun basically sighted in on the camera, and this is very difficult with a compromised grip to do. So with this trigger and with all the CZ triggers, the bit that I'm pulling the trigger with, I use the tip of my pad there. It's going to be different for everybody and the shape of their trigger. The triggers are different on the different types of guns. This is a standard 75 trigger, but it's not very different from the SP01 trigger. The SP01s are a little bit easier 
to pull straight to the rear due to the geometry of the frame. The tan foes are even easier to pull straight to the rear, if you can believe it. The shadow twos are even more easy to pull straight to the rear. So um, having a light hammer spring helps. This is about a thir this is a 13 pound Cajun Gunworks spring. Uh, but I can do it with the stock shadows off the shelf and stock 75s off the shelf as well. It really takes a lot of practice. It is something that you have to master. And to that, it's not just figuring out like, okay, that's good enough. I can almost do it. No, you need to be able to, number one, do it. So be able, you know, to pull the trigger straight to the rear without the front sight moving at all in double action. And then you need to be able to do it every single time and truly master it. And this has been a challenge for me because I'm usually kind of good enough, let's keep going, but if the standard is every single time without fail, then I'm, I'm not there yet, I can do it, but it's not every single time. Uh, there's nothing to fear about the double action. You can be more aggressive on the trigger when you're coming on the target with the double action gun than you can a striker gun because you have a good bit of slack and heavy trigger to kind of prep. Um, and once you learn how to do it, you're using the correct amount of pressure. Good practice is to do it with you know, strong hand only and try and do it that way. You can do it, but it just kind of changes how you grip the pistol. But if you can do it strong hand only, it's really easy to do uh, with two hands. But as I mentioned in all my videos, if you have a firing pin block CZ, use an O-ring, uh, number 83 O-ring, like Home Depot or Lowe's, around the firing pin, or just use a snap cap. This uh, firing pin retaining pin can snap if you're just cranking on double action a lot, there's a good chance that you'll burn out the uh, trigger return spring as well. So just be cognizant of that. If, if that goes, you'll know because the trigger will stop resetting. You can still manually reset it in that instance. It's not terribly challenging to change out. Just, just be aware if you're gonna really sit there and practice that that's one of the risks of practicing the double action pull over and over and over again. So. Uh, anyway, that's my video. That's what I got for you on the double action for a CZ or TANFO. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. Love engaging with you guys in the comments and really appreciate all the support you guys have shown me. And uh, see you on the next one.